Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Soul Factory for our midweek Bible study. My name is Dave Thompson. I am so thankful and grateful to um, be the individual that God would choose to deliver his word tonight. And a great word, I believe, is going to be. Um, before we get started, I, I'm going to ask that we all just take a minute and just relax, kind of get the world off us. Um, like me, I know you probably went to work today or if you was looking for a job or whatever the case may be. Let's put all that behind us and just get into a space where we can hear this word of deliverance that God is gonna deliver. Cause I truly believe this and uh, trust in this because this, this particular message and even the messages before this one have been spot on in terms of where we are as a community, as a world, it's just so much going on. And this message has been freeing, it has been uplifting, it has been empowering, empowering, empowering. Um, it has had everything we need um, to make it or that I need um, to make it through the days. So let me pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for tonight and everyone that uh, tune in or will tune in and are tuning in tonight and those that will look at this message later. I pray that we all, Lord God, receive what it is that you would have us to receive, that we will get out the way, Lord God, and not let and let nothing distract us from what it is you're delivering to us tonight. We thank you. We praise you and give you all glory and honor. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. Amazing faith, part four. <laughs> amazing faith. When I think about amazing faith, um, I think about the soul factory. And let me explain that to you. When I came to the Soul Factory, it was like, I, I, was, I, I didn't know what to expect. I came on the, those that know me, I came by way of a play, like most people that come to the factory. And I ended up getting um, in touch with something that was inside me, but I had not yet uh, discovered that which was inside me. And so through Bible studies, through the play, through the messages, through the things that were going on back then, through my pastor, Deron Cloud, tutoring, mentoring, um, fathering, brothering, <laughs> whatever you, all of it, I was able to be moved by the spirit of God that was in him directing him in terms of what to say and do and where to put and how to, or, you know, everything that encompasses me ending up right here in this seat. Um, and it just opened up a whole new world for me. Um, and so when I was thinking about Amazing Faith, um, Pastor Jill was teaching, um, I don't know if it was the, the uh, part two or three, but it was one of them. And this thought hit my head. I had, I wrote down, amazing faith that shocks people happens when I am totally surrendered and fully grateful. Totally surrendered and fully grateful. And I've been able to obtain and hear the word of God and make it applicable to my life because I've done these two things. I've tried, I've been sincere about these two things. And that is being surrendered to God's words and his directions and his corrections and the process uh, that was in my, that was carrying me that I was going through and being fully grateful for the saving of my life. Come on now. Are you grateful? Are you just have a level of gratitude that I like to say that God, I just, whatever you ask me 
inside me, I, I, I'm telling you, I want to do it. I want to get it done. I want to do it right. I want to be everything that you've created me to be that others may find you when they encounter me. They won't find me. They'll, they'll find you. And the way they'll find you is because they'll be shocked by the faith, the amazing faith that I would exhibit based on where, where, where I've been and them knowing where I've been. And I, I, I just, I'm telling you, being surrendered and fully grateful. It says amazing faith that shocks people happens when I am totally surrendered and fully grateful. Totally surrendered to what? I'm totally surrendered to the process because the process sometimes is just like, it's tough. It's the process sometimes makes me want to say, and what I mean by tough is the process is everything that encompasses life that comes at us where we, I was raised by my parents to, my mother told me this, get a good job and you, and work hard. You're going to be all right. That was part of the process. But as I was going, that was a little too slow for me at times. So I ended up doing things I had no business doing. And I know everybody that uh, walks the face of this earth some way, somehow try to make it happen for themselves. So I know I I'm not alone in this. And so because of that process, a lot of things happened that shouldn't happen when I went in, when I did it on my own ingenuity. But when I came to the soul factory and I started finding out new value, new ways of life, like, um, the message wasn't just a, uh, oh man, how can I say? It was a spiritual message. It's spiritual in its con, it's spiritual in its content, and it's and it's a God breathed word, because I always tell people that the, the dream key, soul values, and the mission, vision, all that is all biblical. When you if you read scripture, you can see where our pastors were led to these things. These things weren't something they just Put a rabbit out of a hat. No, it was delivered through revelation, through prayer, through fasting, through all the methods that God said to use when we're trying to get an answer from Him. So I'm grateful for that. So amazing faith part four is really, really, really um I want you to walk away. I really, really want you to walk away with the understanding that it is foundational. Amazing faith, faith in itself is foundational, but amazing faith that shocks is what I believe the call of my life. God called me to have amazing faith that it would shock people. <laughs> I could simply put, simply put. So um, Sunday, Sunday, Pastor Jill read, um, she read the uh, about us statement in, on online. We have about us. She read what we believe as a ministry. Before y'all pull that up, I want to explain why is this important. This is is important because if I if 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 I understand what my ministry believe in, and everything that's taught through this mentor in this ministry, it this is foundational. These beliefs. Make these uh, produces these things, these messages, these things, because God took the soul factory, this ministry, and told them, "Hey, change lives from the inside out while leading people to a growing relationship with Jesus Christ." What that mean? That means my life need to change from the inside out. It's all individual. It's a lifestyle. It's not a cliche. It's not something that you just say. It's something that we walk. And every individual that comes through there. Um, you know, gets to hear these stories, gets to make this decision, gets to go through this process in their own different way. All of us went through it differently, but it was the same message. Be changed from the inside out while leading people to a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, now, if we can pull up the belief statement. I asked my team to do this, man. We got a, we got a mean team. We got a bomb team. I love our ministry. Our, our ministry are can-do of people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So. Um, you know, they 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 get in and get it done where they can. The belief statement says, we believe that God has reconciled us to himself. We believe, we believe the promise and welcome the process of God to deliver us from bondage 
and separation as demonstrated in the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt. Keep it up. I want y'all to look at these words and don't just read it just to go through it. Read it to understand it and try to make it personal for yourself. For me, when it says we believe, that's number one. We believe. Dave, I believe. Dave, do you believe this? Because when I say I believe or when we say we believe, I want, I want you to understand that means belief is behind it comes a behavior. How do you behave, Dave? Do you behave as though you've been reconciled, that God has reconciled you to himself? Dave, do you behave um, and welcome the promise? Welcome the welcome. And do you believe the promise and welcome the process of God to deliver us? <laughs> welcome the process. See, so many times when I was just trying to find my way in quote unquote church, or mention I was seeing things and I was seeing people go to church and it always was a feel good thing. So when I came to Soul Factor, I was looking for the feel good thing. But when God started to change my life from the inside out, it felt good, but sometimes it felt it, it really hurt and it and and, and hurt in a just yes, hurt so good because <laughs> it was just truth. Truth can hurt, truth can heal, truth can lead you to a lot of wisdom, a lot of good, good, good. It might not seem good to somebody else, and they might say something, but I'm telling you, when you understand truth and the process of truth. And transforming your life and understanding that God has reconciled us back to himself. The freedom. Oh, my God. We're going to get there. All right. So let's keep it moving. Uh, welcome to the process of God. Deliver us from bondage and separation. As demonstrated in the deliverance of the children of Israel. Is children of Israel from Egypt. We believe that Jesus met the criteria set by the Father in the redemption, redemption process. Redeemed y'all, redemption process, and the Holy Spirit continues this walk and guides us into truth and life. You can take it down. The Holy Spirit continues this, this process. It's continuing right now. You know how it's continuing? Because every day we go out, it's so much going on in the world. I want to say this before I go into it. If you are not, if you new to the ministry to, to Christ, or if you're a new believer in Christ, I pray that new believers get this message of, of amazing faith and freedom. Because I watched my um, brother in law get baptized um, Saturday. I think it was Saturday. Yes, he got baptized Saturday at this little church, and it was nice. And, you know, thing, everything that they do, and I mean, it was just so good. But I, I was so taken by it because I know him. Me and him was two peas in the pod. We was out there. And he continued a little longer than me. But when he was going up, I went up there. I just went right up front. I just went up there. You know, those that know me, I, I, I just walked up there. I, ain't, I, I, did, I didn't mean to disrespect the ministry or nothing like that. But I felt I needed to be there with him. And let him know, man, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so thankful, man. He just looked at me and said, Dave, man, I'm just tired, man. And I understand that. See, when you get tired of being tired, of being tired of yourself, God said, okay, we can work. That's that, that's that, um, that's that totally surrendered. <laughs> that leads to Fully grateful. Come on now. Do you get that? Do you get to have you? Are you just tired of just walking around with that little attitude and or whatever your vice may be or whatever your thing may be? Are you tired of struggling in the world? Are you tired of always worrying? And it says be anxious for nothing. Are you anxious and have all this anxiety about bills, about how it's going to turn out, about how that's going to turn out? I'm telling you. The love of God. When God said he reconciled us, reconciled us to himself, I don't have to worry about being that crackhead or being that drug addict or being that adulterer or being that thing that I was in the past because now I have a running track record of the process of God and his amazing faith uh, showing up in my life. Come on now. It's the same for you. Everybody that will hear this message, I want you to know right now you are free. In Christ, indeed, if you are saved, you are free. And stop taking on these, these falsehoods, these things that we tell ourselves that God won't love us because of. God loves us. He loves us, y'all. 
He loves her and know that. And know that. I I need to be moving because I'm just excited, but I haven't even gotten to the message. So this is review. So we talked about amazing faith, the faith shapes, um, faith that shocks people, right? Uh, we talked about the belief, the belief at the factory and everything, because in our beliefs, in our belief statement, it encompasses our walk. All right, it encompasses our walk and it encompasses our behaviors as we behave individually. And so um, Pastor Jill was touching bases with our keys, keys to life. We call them dream keys. But I remember I say I was like, I didn't ask her. She was explaining her and pa all Pastor Duran was explaining the dream keys and why they came about. And it came about so that um, for me, I had put a note on, on my on my sheet with my dream keys. This is when I got it. man, this is so old. But anyway, um, it says dream keys for me was how to communicate. Simply put, it, they were just how to communicate for me. And so what these dream keys will do for you, I promise you, anybody that's listening, now, I want you to, when I say these keys, I want you to think about Jesus Christ. Accountability. Is Christ not accountable? Betrayal of confident. Could we, could we trust Christ with our deepest, deepest thoughts, our deepest, deepest secrets, whatever was inside? Because he already knew. So we couldn't keep nothing from him. So no betrayal of confidence. Honesty and integrity. Come on now. Just sure with the Lord. Come on. <laughs> Honesty and integrity. Humility. Don't walk in the fences. Can't walk in the fences. Thorough, complete communication. All these in themselves are, are, are conduct, uh, character conduct and conversation pieces. These are the makeup. Of, 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 of my belief of, of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I believe I believe this is his makeup I believe that this is how he walked and this was his being and this is how he communicated with people and this is how he dealt with situations offenses and things like this he was clear and he was concise in his communication to the people come on y'all y'all get that do y'all get that and I promise you you get these these keys and these things and you make them applicable to yourself see I I made I had to do uh, new believers, new, belonging and believing at the factory. We've done new members class. And part of it was, and it will say that we didn't have to be perfect. We just had to be sincere. And, I, and I've been thinking about that lately. For me, sincerity was something of the heart. I believe sincerity was something of the heart. If I was sincere, it was in my heart where I was sincere and that God recognized my heart. So he knew I was sincere. Even when I would like be making mistakes in my mind, they weren't mistakes because God said, look, I know you're sincere about what you're trying to do. Now, let me show you how to do it right. OK, let's check your integrity. Let's check your honesty. Let's check your accountability. You follow me? Let me check your, hey, let me check your, um, clear, cause let me check your communication. And so these things stick with me and I try to function in these things. By no way am I telling you I'm perfect and I'm walking around. I got all this cranked up. No, I make mistakes all day. Sometimes I cry because I'll be like, God, are you pleased with me today? Are you pleased with me today? In my heart, I'll be asking because sometimes life can come so full force at me. My life and everything that's encompassing my life from my job, from raising kids, from raising other kids, from raising other kids. And from all these things that God has placed here, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the privilege and opportunity to be able to pour into all their lives and ministry and everything. Everything God will use me to do because I'm so grateful for him pulling me out of that madness that I was living in when I was tired. <laughs> are you tired yet? Do you understand what I'm saying? So these things are, are definitely important. All right? So they will lead you to amazing faith. They will lead you to a great walk. They'll lead you to a freedom that no one will be able to understand when everybody is like, man, what's happening? They're shooting. Like the, my pastor, around, man, he used to say, they're shooting. And people be, you know, you take off running, whatever. No, they're shooting. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we good. For the Father is there. And he knows all things. Remember that. All right. So we're going to move on. And Amazing Faith Part 3, Pastor Jill, she was uh, talking about, um, she was talking about um, how to, to welcome the process. That's what she was reading the uh, belief statement. It says, welcome the process. 
And so welcome to process from what I got from what Pastor Jill was talking about was welcome that process when God is working on you. Do you recognize the pro it as it as being a process where God is trying to get you to a higher level? What is the process? What does the process look like? The process for me as someone brand new coming to Christ was to first and foremost be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I had to change my thinking. There was a lot of, Pastor DeRange to always tell us, he said, man, y'all need to get rid of that street loyalty. You can't bring that street loyalty in, you know, you, you, you can't flow like that. It was a lot of things. And, and just the way we were, we were raised, our parents and those who love us, they raised us with the intentions of raising us right, with the intentions of giving us everything they, they felt we needed. And some were led, um, were, were led to God, went to church, and God was able to, you know, they were able to get the seed of God placed in them by um, going to church, reading scriptures, and being a part of a, a church. I didn't have that. I didn't have that. And um, I got it differently. I say now, God was showing me how to serve through my mother. My mother served. She was a waitress, so she served. And people that know me know that story. So she served, and she served for 33 years, and she served, she served people that the world didn't have compassion on. She was a waitress. And so it was during the times of drugs and then dope fiend, people that fiend off, off drugs and so we called them dope fiends. So dope fiends, I was a dope fiend or drug addict or whatever you want to call it. But we were the undesirables. But my mother would wait on no matter who. She waited on Sugar Ray Lynn and Murray Tommy Hearns. Um, I can go down the list. All the mayors of Mayor Washington, all the mayors in D.C. that was through there before she passed, they she waited on them. Um, they did the the movie DC Cab at, at Florida Avenue Grill, all that. So I'm saying that to say that I was I was an, um, introduced to service through her, but didn't recognize it then. I recognize it now. So it says I had wrote this little note down. It says somewhere along the line we think that you get to be amazing, but we get to be me. Okay, she was saying somewhere along the line. We look for God to be amazing, but we get to be mediocre. No, we don't get to be mediocre. God is looking, it says, Im the, imitate the wall, imitate Christ. That's something we should be doing. We should be imitating Christ. For as we follow him, we, we, we get led to the fire. We get, we get led to the power that he walked in. I'm telling you. So it says that God, God's amazing faith is not. Just for God to be amazing. We know God is amazing, but it's for us to imitate that amazing faith. We don't get to be mediocre. We get to deal with that thing that's inside of us. Each of us have, have something inside. Of it. It was, we were born with it. We were created with it. We have a fallen, a fallen nature have that's, that, that, that's right there with us. How do you know? When you trying to, you ever try to pray sometime and have this crazy thought? You be like, man, I'm trying to. I'm praying and this thought is going through my head. I'm telling you, it's always there. But we get to show amazing faith when we just focus in on the word of God. Amazing faith shows up when, when everything going on and everybody is worried and, and you're not. Because you know that you know from the deep inside you, you know you're sincere about this walk with God. And you know God said, I will never leave you. Know, say, these, are, these are elementary things to, that I picked up. I'm going to say for me, they were elementary because they were some of the first things I picked up. Not that they mediocre or they don't matter. Because understanding that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you is for life for me. And it will always mean something. I want the person that, that don't understand, that, that I use, I use this, this brother named Sean Hunter's words. I use his words. His words were, he came to a, a, a cell group meeting where we met as men. And he came and he said, he came through my door. This brother said, man, I don't know nothing about God. He had a big old Bible on his hand. He just said, man, I don't know nothing about God, but I'm here. So for that person, it's okay. Know this. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. So keep searching them and thirsting for some knowledge and wisdom and look through scriptures and it's going to come to you. It's going to come to you. You know why? Because you're sincere in your heart about it. All right. Something else that was said um, last service. And I encourage you. Look at this amazing faith series. Just get it and just take the time out. Feed yourself. Feed yourself so you can start to walk in the freedom of Christ. 
walk in the freedom and the joy of Christ. If you out there and you struggle with any kind of drugs, you're struggling with anything, you're struggling with anger, you're struggling with fear, you're struggling with anything, let's tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. Christ said, I will leave you a comforter. All right, so got to keep it moving. Um, Pastor Jill said, the adversary gets a foothold because he catches us in resistance. When we know the things to do and the conviction comes, let me use me. I can know the things. I can, I can be sitting somewhere. If most of the time when I'm out there, I'm working around, you know, I'm just out in the world working. You know, I got believers, non-believers, everybody's around me, but everybody do things different. So I can, I always know when Dave, you're not supposed to be here. You're not supposed to be sitting and listening to this conversation. I give you a great example. It happened today. We had a half a day for the for the kids. So I came in um, from lunch and I was sitting at my desk, but these people were in my room and they were looking at a movie. And when I looked at the screen, the movie was a horror movie. So I just said, "This I say, so why are y'all sitting here looking at that? What are you looking? What you getting for? Is it just for entertainment? It just." For me, when I come to my room, I, I really like to sit there and I probably have my music on, have the lights out, you know, nothing going on. But these people were already in there, so I couldn't come and change the vibe like that. So I just asked a question because I was, I want to know, well, what you getting from it? I pretty much knew, just like myself, back in the day, I would watch stuff for entertainment. In watching stuff for entertainment, just entertaining your mind, opposed to trying to pick up the scriptures or read, it ain't even got to be scriptures, pick up, pick up something life-giving <laughs> you know something uh edible you know some something that's gonna feed your spirit your good spirit not something that's gonna tap into that wickedness that we all have it says the sin that dwelleth within that's in romans we have a level of sin that dwells in there and when we tap into these visuals on tv and these audibles <clears throat> on the radio and things like that when it's not right it taps into that thing that's not right in us. And that's a reality. We all have it. But it's, um, this brother told me, say, man, something about these two wolves. And he said, which one went out? And then, he, and then I said, um, the good wolf or something like that. They say, no, the one who gets fed the most. So if there's two wolves, one is a bad wolf and one is a good wolf, which ones went out? Which one went out? The one that gets fed the most. So if you're feeding the, the wolf, the bad wolf, meaning the wolf with all that, uh, you need to hear this. The scriptures say you got itchy ears. You need to hear all this gossip. You need to hear all this thing. These sweet stories. These uh, <laughs> um, these shows they be having on um, on TV where they have midwives and all this type. I mean, LA wives, basketball wives, and all this drama. That's what I want to say. Drama. You know, they were looking at some John. I, I say, man, how, I can't watch this. This John just got too much drama in. So I was looking at a racing show. Something. I, I mean, Fast and Furious or something. And then I just stopped watching everything and just tuned out because I knew I had to be here. So why I'm saying that? Because in them times, the devil, he he catches us when we when we are resisting. So he get a foothold. He get a place that he can stand on later. Might not do nothing, but he get a place he can stand on later. And you be wondering, how did I get here? Oh, you remember you were just sitting back just watching that movie for entertainment. You was really enjoying yourself where it fed something in you. Now you're going down that road. This is a true fact. How I know, because I used to be a masturbator. I used to do a whole lot of things, you know, that I had no business to do. And I had to understand that, Dave, you're getting the urge to do these things because you keep feeding that thing through your visual and through your audibles. You have to watch that. Watch your intake vows. I tell everybody, your intake vows, what you eat, what you listen to, what you see. You find what you feed in yourself. Watch your intake vows. All right, the adversary gets a foothold because he catches us in resistance. Okay, it says, oh, this was good too. She says, do not, she says, do not let me lose sight of my relationship with you. And um, the relation, my relationship with God, do not let me lose sight of that. And what's that? The big picture. God loves everybody. <laughs> big picture. God loves everybody. God loves everybody. So that's a little review. I would tell you to get, you know, to be sure to look at the look at the services because it's just so much. And I can really do this whole service off a review. However, I do have some things that I want to um, talk to you about this amazing faith part four. And um, my takeaway as I get into the lesson now 
is that the takeaway is that is God call on my life is amazing faith. Simply for me, God's call on my life is amazing, amazing faith. And I will say the same for you. Um, when we first started the series, um, Pastor Jill said, we ask God for God's amazing grace. He asked us for our amazing faith. And I thought that was a great thing, great lead into. And so, I mean, I'm just enjoying this message. All right. All right. I got, um, first I want to ask, who has been amazed by your faith? Who has been amazed by your faith? Think about who's been amazed by your faith. Who, who is, you know, see, know you and never been amazed by your faith. And this faith is not a one-time thing. Who has been amazed by your faith when you was in your toughest moment? You know, and they saw you just weather the storm. It wasn't that you got some money on a new car and all like that. You know, you really, really went through. And so people often share with me, you know, things because I, they know my story. And I'm telling you, faith, the faith in God that I have and that I um, just try to always be conscious of is what keeps me. If I did not have it, I don't know what I do. So I'm telling you, everybody, new believers, old believers, not yet, believe, don't yet believe God is real. You can trust the most high. You can trust in the fact that Christ died. You can trust in the fact that he left us a comforter. You can trust in the fact that the sins that we commit when we miss the mark sin, miss the mark, what mark? The mark of the 10 words, 10 standards to just the character things, just to try to hit them marks and try to be in that place and try to try to try to be that example of God's love in the earth in this dark, dark times. This is some dark times. And it's not surprising. You know, for those of us who are in tune with the scripture and read the scripture like that, we're any different from you. It's just that we're sincere about understanding God. What is your plan for this creation? Meaning me, meaning you. What is his plan for? Have you ever just asked God that so he can start to lead us down that road and you can start to enjoy all of life in its abundance, every bit of it. And I ain't talking about what happens. I'm talking about when, it's, when the world sees something that's bad. I might be going through something. The world might say, man, that's tough, man. I don't know how you do it. Say amazing faith. <laughs> man, how you? I, I don't know how you do that, man. I, what? That happened? I don't know how you do that. Amazing faith. I don't say nothing. I'll be like, hey, man, bless God. Just like that. But it's amazing faith. All right. Let's do slide one. I hope you all enjoying this, and I pray that you get it. All right. Philippians 1, 27 through 26, it says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Keep this scripture up. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one, in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God and that by God. But listen to this. Whatever happens, here we go. whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Worthy of the gospel of Christ. David, you heard God's word. You know what the gospel of Christ has said about this situation, that situation, about life. It says, be worthy of it. How do I be worthy of it? I believe. And then in that belief, that belief created a behavior in me, and I walk that behavior out. This is whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm. This is Paul talking. He's talking to this group of people. He's saying, like, even if I'm there or not, I need, you know, whether I hear, whether he said, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Come on, without being frightened, you can take it down. Without being frightened, without being frightened. I think sometimes life just deal with some cars and we become frightened. I know I have. And then in, in me becoming frightened, I switch mm, right back to my old ingenuities, trying to figure out how I'm going to work this out. 
How I'm going to work this out? No amazing faith here. I'm trying, I'm trying to work this out. And that's when I have to tap back in and remember. Remember, don't be anxious about just remember, just remember some of the small. Hey, don't be anxious for anything. You need wisdom, ask God. He'll tell you. He's there for you. So I had put on here, the fear of God is the beginning of so many things. Jill, um, Pastor Jill said that. She said the fear of God is the beginning of so many things. The fear of God is the beginning of so many things. When I, and, and, and listen, everybody should fear God because he's God. He created the heavens and earth. Look, understand everything we see, everything God created man, so man's engineering, his, the wisdom that God has and everything is far beyond anything we can understand. And I think this is what brings it clear for me. And I hope this helps you out. I don't like saying God. I like Yah. I like the, the Hebrew. I like Yah. And the reason I say that because when I, for real, for real, I, I don't like even putting a name to describe the most high. Because when I do that, now I, it's to me, I seem like I put them in a box. I put, put the, the knowledge of it in a box. I, don't, I can't say him, her, it, what? I know power. I know spirit. I know energy. I know he encompasses everything. And I always tell people when I talk to them, I say, you want to know what God looks like? Look at the sky. Tell me where it ends and tell me where it begins. If you, then you understand God. Because you can't tell me where it ends. You can't tell me where it began. I can't tell you God's way. I can't tell you God's thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So I might see this and call this bad, but God might look and see it and call it good. Come on now. It's just that simple for me. Make it simple. Don't overthink. Don't overthink this thing. God's, the simplicity of God's word is so freeing. Oh my God, it's so freeing for us. The simplicity of God's word is so friend, but we must be sincere about this walk. No, not just uh, in general, no, personally. In my heart, in your heart, we don't have to be perfect, but we have to be sincere. Perfect was always external for me, meaning it was something that I was trying to be that you could see it. At this point, I'm just sincere. If you see that some perfect stuff, that's your talking. I just want to be sincere in my efforts. I want to be sincere when I failed in my um, repentance and, 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 and in my walk. I want to be sincere in all that I do. I know I'm going to fall short. It says every all of us fall short of the glory of God. Because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And when we walk in there and understand that, but guess what? He still loves us. How you know he gave his son? See, unless we believe the death and resurrection of Christ, of Yeshua Christ, Jesus Christ, we don't, unless we believe that, what are we doing? What are we doing? Before this, I had, I had run into a whole lot of theology. I had ran into a whole lot of stuff before I decided to say, Dave, what you what you going to do? And I simply said, I said, Lord, I said, disciple me. I said, God, disciple me. That's when he placed me in front of the Ron. And Pastor Jill, Pastor Deron and Pastor Jill and Hey, all the brothers that ever came through because Pastor Deron had discipled them and everything. So we all came through this understanding, this training of changing lives from the inside out and first starting with our own life. And all our lives are better for it. Whether we still in this ministry or not, wherever we are on the earth, we have that light inside of us. And I pray to God, glory to God, hallelujah, that that light, that light right there is shining through all that came through and received it and that they didn't just receive it to be for some kind of um, profit or something, but that they received it to change the world with it. Hallelujah. All right, let's get it. All right, it says, we were always supposed to be on our way to amazing faith. <laughs> we should always have been on our way to amazing faith. Come on now. Second, second slide, please. Second Corinthians. Amplified version. Second Corinthians two. All right, for we we are the sweet fragrance. Keep this up of Christ, which is which ascends to God, discernible both among those who are being saved 
and among those who are perishing. To the latter one, to the latter one, an aroma, aroma from death to death, a fatal offense, offensive odor. But to the other, an aroma of life, a vital fragrance, living and fresh. I like this first part. For we are a sweet, a sweet fragrance of Christ, which ascends to God. For me, when I see that, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, it's my behavior. And, and, and when I do what I'm supposed to do and God's glory is revealed, it's a sweet aroma that ascends to God. It's discernible both among those who are being saved. So if the person is right there, they're being saved, that they're receiving it. And among those who are perishing, those who, who can't receive it. And to the latter, meaning the ones who can't receive it or don't receive it, an aroma from death to death, a fatal offensive odor, but to the other, an aroma from life to life, a vital fragrance, living and fresh. And who is adequate and sufficiently qualified for these things? For we are not like many, acting like merchants, Peddling God's words. Come on now. Shortchanging. Adulterating God's message. But from pure, uncompromised motives as commissioned and sent from God, we speak his message in Christ in the sight of God. Keep it up. <laughs> hey, look. My belief. This ain't in the Bible. This ain't nothing that this ain't Pastor G or Pastor Ron. This is me. This was sent to the soul factor. Come on. These dream keys, soul values, these things we stand on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If I get the worst person to be sincere about their walk in Christ and love Christ, this word here, these attributes, these characteristics, these revelations that were given to this ministry will have them so free that they will go shine the light of Christ. These, it's not the dream keys, it's the message of the dream keys. It's what that message does as it connects with God's words and we walk it out Individually, do you get it? I'm not peddling these words here. I'm peddling these words, these scriptures. But each of these words are backed by scripture. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Each of them is backed by scripture. Come on now. I'm so excited. I don't, I hope I'm not overwhelming you with just that type, but that is so key because I'm trying to get you to be free. I'm really asking you to be free in Christ and know that he loves everybody. And when you out there and you sincere in your heart and you trying to walk this out, you will see. All right, you can take that down. I had also wrote that who is offended by your faith? Who offended by your faith, David? Who is offended by your faith, David? <laughs> so many people, but I don't even get there with that. I don't, it don't matter to me, you know. Because one time my brother, God rest his soul, he's not here anymore. But he was going through. <laughs> and I had came over there. He called me to come get him. I would typically come get him. This is my baby brother. And he was going through again. And it was like repetitive. Um, and ooh, I just it just came. I was a new Christian. <laughs> you know what that means. So I was Jesus Christ and him. Like every time he would ask me something. <laughs> you know how we be as new Christians. And so we was riding in my car. I'll say something. He slapped the dashboard. He say, bam. He said, man, all you ever talk about is God. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I ain't know what to do. And, you know, from there, we, we, you know, we made it through the night. But that always stick out to me. And that's what that statement just, uh, he was offended. He was offended by my faith. I love my brother. I miss him so much. All right. So. I want to, uh, let me see what I got, what time I got. All right, do I want to do this? Yeah, I want to tell you something. I want to, I want to read something to you. 
this person in scripture, this brother, this brother in the Bible, oh my God, this brother has so much faith. And I don't think that we um, recognize uh, how much faith it, it, it took for this brother to experience the experience that experience. But I want to read something, something, it's a short little uh, blurb, a little, little article. It says, trees snap like toothpicks or fly upward wrenched from the earth. Whole rooftop sails, cars tumbles like toys, walls collapse, a mountain of water jumps the shore and engulfs the land. A hurricane cuts off, cuts, cuts and tears and only solid foundations, only solid foundations survive her unbridled fury. But those foundations can be used for rebuilding after the storm. For any building, the foundation is critical. It must be deep enough and solid enough to withstand the weight of the building and other stresses. Lives are like buildings and quality and the quality of their foundation will determine the quality of the whole. Too often inferior materials are used and when tests come, lives crumble. Why is that important? Because this is foundational teaching at the factory. Foundational. Foundational. And when we study and we get into the word and we apply the word, our roots begin to go deeper and deeper. Um, Bishop Perrin came to the church and taught one time and he taught on uh, the, you know, being rooted in Christ. I believe it was there. And he used trees and he used the, the fact that a a palm tree roots are so deep that when the storms and the winds come, all they do is this. Bounce right back. Because their roots run deep. Other trees were being snatched up, rooted up, blown away, just like that article said. And um, so it's very important that when we watch these messages, when we read God's word, that we 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 start to um grow root in it. And so you take something and, and, and when you see about it and you start to dive into it more, but you start making that internal change. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind and our thinking. And we must look to Christ. We must look to God. We must look to the fact that and understand the fact that he loves us no matter, you know, despite ourselves, we're going to have to have consequences for our behaviors, consequences for whatever we do. But in the trials of life, in the different trials of life, you know, God is just there. And the big picture is that he loves everyone. He loves us all. He would never leave us nor forsake us. And he's there to give us all that we need when we need it. But are we turning to him or are we turning to ourselves? So we have to take ownership of this walk. We have to not be caught up by the winds that blow, you know, the little things that go, and be solidified in a foundational understanding of who Christ Jesus is, who Yeshua is to you. You know, so who's offended by your faith? All right, let's get on down the road. Let's go, Job, uh, slide three. I'm sorry. Follow me, y'all. In the land of us, as I want to say, use of, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared and shunned, he feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he owned seven, okay, I want to skip all that. Take that down for a minute. He was blameless, he was upright, he feared God and he shunned evil. That's what I want from that. Because all the belongings that it talks about all that Job have, and those that know the story of Job, I why I think Job is my example of amazing faith because of all that stuff. You know, good will, just like the rich young ruler when, when when he asked Christ, what could he do? Christ said, Hey, <laughs> give up everything to the poor or something and follow me. He was like, oh, this is a hard thing. I, can, I don't think I can do that. Something to that effect. Mm, that's us. That's me. I'm not, I'm not saying that's not me. I'm saying I know that's you. And owning that fact, 
owning that fact and understanding that helps me to become blameless, helps me to be upright, helps me to be helps me to fear God and shun evil. I fear God. I fear God not in the sense that I'm oh God. No, I fear God that I'm convicted when I step across the wrong line. Are you? Are you just doing things and pushing past and, oh, yeah, you know, God knows my heart type thing. That's an old saying. I'm not trying to be cliche, but it's just what people say. Or don't judge me. Listen, that's not me. That's the conviction I'm talking about right there. God convicts me when I'm wrong. He convicts us all. How we know? We know because sometimes we do things in, in our mind or the spirit, the spirit will come and say, don't do that. And you do it anyway. I do it anyway. Then we get into a situation where consequences for what we've done happen. And we're talking about, oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know? So I fear God. Do you fear God? Do you fear God in a loving way? I fear God so much that it hurts me when I do something. Are you that type of lover of God? Do you love him like that? Do you love God like that? Do you love and I'm grateful for God like that for the life that we have? You know, I think about all that's going on in the world, all the things that's going on in the world. And I just say, God, I just love you. And I just often sit back and just like what Job went through. I don't know. I don't know. This is what Job went through. And as we read further, you'll see. Let's pull up slide four. All right. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were, were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby and the, and the Sabines, Sabians, Sabians attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the, from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house while when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it collapsed on them and they were dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, here we go. Naked I came from the mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Hallelujah. Take that down. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. When I read it, I started to immediately put myself kind of like, you know, if this was happening or whatever, and all I could say to God was, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, God. And here's why. Because I can't tell you that I would have torn my robe, shaved my head, and said, praise the Lord. Naked I came into the world. Naked I leave. I can't tell you that that would have been my cry. I can't tell you that. And because of that, 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 that convicts my heart. Where you at with that? Do you trust God? Or do you trust your things right now all over the earth in uh, Ukraine? People are living such lives like this where they had a home, but now they don't have nothing. Buffalo, Texas, shootings, killings, all this going on. Hey, 
my towel was in the store, whatever. Hallelujah, come on. Will, we, will our faith be amazing during these times? What does that look like, God? I just said, have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me. But know that this, the scripture says, God's grace and mercy will endure forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever, y'all. God knows our ways. He knows our heart in and out. He knows exactly what we're thinking when we're thinking it. He knows exactly what we need when we need it. He knows how to comfort her. You know why you know that to be true? Because when Christ ascended, he said, I'm going to leave you with a comforter. Do we call on the comforter? Have you called on the comforter and invited the Holy Spirit into your life to lead and guide you each day into what you see, say, and do what you thinking? Do you, do you rest your, your beliefs on the word and what you know to be true about God in your own life? Are you sincere about this walk? Do you know what it means to be totally surrendered? Are you fully grateful? Totally surrendered to me. You ever see a candle? You light a candle and the wax that melts down the candle and it just melts to the bottom. That's totally surrendered like that. You, you know, just, just melt down. You surrender to God. You drop to your knees right then and there. Right when you, when God say drop to your knees, you will get in your spirit. You don't care about who around or nothing. You know, do you, do you understand it from that perspective? We are in such a blessed, blessed place in life. But yet many of us complain, complain, complain. We're not even grateful for some of the things that we have. And I'm just telling you, family, we are right where God wants us to be. He loves us. I want y'all to receive the love of God tonight. I want y'all to know God is there for you. I want you to know that God is just, just, just right there to give you everything you need. And that sometimes what we need is truth. All the time we need truth. Not sometimes. We need truth all the time. But like I got in one of my one of my um mission statements for um exit addiction. I can't but I know it says that we we will reveal the truth of the past and the present. And this can the past, the, the past and the present, and this truth can be hurtful or harmful or something like that as we are transformed into a new way of thinking, something to that effect. And I'm telling you, that's how it is in life. God loves us so much that he's not going to cut any corners with us. But God said he would never give us more than we can bear. So let's put our, our, put our, put our belief in the right place. Let's put our, let's understand that God is looking at our hearts. And so even when we try to fake it, you can't fake it because God knows exactly where your heart is. He loves you. And I want everybody to know that God loves you so much. And he would never leave you, nor forsake you. And everywhere you hurting at, every tear you cry, everything you go through, God knows. And He'll give you revelations. You've had times where you've seen what God say, I'm going to do this, or he showed you things. You're like, man, God showed me this and this and that. But I want you to understand this. The revelation is for an appointed time. Can you wait? Do you have faith that will amaze people, shock them, because they know your life is going through a whole bunch of stuff. You're in turmoil, but you say, oh, God got me. He ain't forgot me. You ain't forgot me. How you know? Because your necessities are met right now. That's one way I tell. I, I'd be like, look, God, no matter what this might be happening right here, I ain't got to deal with this right here right now. Come on now. Come on. Always see the light of God. It's always shining. If everything was to fold up on me and I'm still breathing, I'm still living, light's still shining. There's still possibilities. And even when he called me home, I'm in a better place. So what I got to lose? What do I got to lose? Nothing. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on now. So let's walk through this life shocking people with our faith. Let's have amazing faith. Amazing faith. That shocks people. Woo! That's you, Dave? Hallelujah. <laughs> Is that you? Is that you? 
All right, man. I, I, I mean, all right, everyone. I apologize. I don't be saying man or whatever. I'm excited, you know, and I pray that God met you right where you are. You know, new believers, old believers, everybody. So let me pray, and we're going to get to our next part of our service. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this message. I pray, Lord God, that your intent for it is 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 prevails lord god i know it will father you you're the alpha and the maker you're the beginning and the end and i thank you lord for such a privilege i pray lord god for my pastors i pray for our ministry i pray for our teachers all of all that teach and put their their hands uh to the plow lord god i pray for our tech team lord god i pray for kids he free i pray for uh the uh, Samaritan's Choice, Lord God. I pray for the families, Lord God, that will attend. Lord God, bring them, bring them, Lord God. Bring your, bring your sheep, Lord God. We'll, we'll go out and we'll feed them. And, and, and Lord God, bring them, Lord God, to get this word, Lord God. Have them come out. Have us to be uh, just consumed with people who just want to hear your word and do your will, Lord God, because that's what we're about doing. It's time for your word to get all out on this earth, Lord God, and, and we want to be some messengers for you, Lord. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's rest in God, y'all. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right.